أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الأطيبين الأنجبين بهم نتولى ومن أعدائهم نتبرأ إلى الله اللهم كل وليك الخجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد I thank Allah for blessing us the, the, the blessing of life, of well-being, of afiyah, that we've witnessed this sacred month of Ramadan, and we ask him to accept from every one of us biqabulin hasan. And thank you all also for giving another opportunity to serve. And Allah Jalla wa'ala make these majalis, make these sessions uh, an asset in our graves and that would remain a noor for our qiyamah in our akhirah insha'Allah. May Allah ta'ala from all the hosts and the organizers of these uh, meetings Allah accept from them as well and for their well-being, for their for marhumin, for everyone and everyone what so hajat you may be having keep of Allah fulfill all of them. One of the reminders that can be given over here is that Mu'mineen, they request for du'as and uh, every time they request for these du'as, which is haq and it is their right and it is upon us to pray for them too. Many a times in this busy schedule that we have, we may forget. So a tip to not forget, it's to sign a mandate with Allah Taala this moment that whosoever you want to be enlisted in all your actions and amal and du'as, sign that mandate with Allah that whatever that khair is, whatever that hasana is, a share of that be delivered to whosoever you want. And one of the tips is that to be delivered to the, the Imam of age, alayhi salatu wasalam, and he be the distribution center so that you get a double bonus that you've given it to the Imam and he is distributing it, dispatching it for you. And the recipients also get it via the Imam alayhi salatu wasalam. So that way another beautiful cover would be, a wrapper would be given to those hadaya that you will be sending to your loved ones. It is a wonderful month and the best of months and shahrullah shahru ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-quran in, uh, in which quran was revealed and then hudan lin nas it is a guidance for the humanity guidance for mankind so for this book and this month we have to work a lot the investment for the month is for the book and the book is for the month so it was revealed in this month so the main importance or the emphasis that we will have to give is to the book of Allah and adab have to be observed recitation of Quran has to be done as much as we can understanding, perceiving reflecting these ayat of Quran in our day to day life now all of this is a lesson to myself first and to you brothers and sisters a reminding that we have such a wonderful book which is the only scripture that we have on the surface of this earth which has remained for the past 1500 years without being distorted. No other book do we find with such greatness, with such adama, which hasn't changed at all. And that is the word of Allah where he has said, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikr wa inna lahu so Allah has promised, Allah is protecting it, and it is upon us also to make the best of this beautiful book. Now before we get into the main, uh, the topic that we have for these few nights, it is the wasiyat of Amirul Mu'mineen to his sons. We'll start it from tomorrow. For tonight, just a few ahkam 
more or less every one of us knows them, just a reminder to refresh so that if there is any, uh, if there are any uh, newcomers or those who have joined new, they also get to know and those who know it's refreshed for them. For this month of Ramadan, you have to have an intention. Before that, you need to be in taqlid of a mujtahid. If someone is not in taqlid of a mujtahid, the actions, the amal, they are not accepted. For them to be accepted, you have to be in taqlid of a mujtahid, a living mujtahid, and the most qualified mujtahid that is, all that is living today. So then, once you are in taqlid of a mujtahid, and you have witnessed the sacred month of Ramadan, you have to fast. And those adab have to be observed. The first thing is to have a niyyat. From this day, you have an intention <coughs> that you will be abiding by this command of Allah in observing the sanctity of this month and qurbatan ilallah. That will be the niyyah. So with that niyat, you have embarked on this uh, on this mission and in this month, either you can have this one niyat today or you can have a niyat every day. So the easy option is to have it today, qurbatan ilallah. You will be uh, observing the fasts of the sacred month of Ramadan. Eating and drinking is not allowed from, from the time of Fajr until the time of Maghrib. So make sure that the timetable you have is also accurate. Give a little bit of an ihtiyat. You stop eating a few minutes before Fajr. Then you, when you are certain of Maghrib, you also break your fast a little bit after Maghrib. Eating and drinking is not allowed. <coughs> Just like that, having relationships also in this month during the fasting is not permitted. Doing anything that would result in a ghusl janabat, that is also forbidden. Lying, saying something that wasn't said by Allah or the Masumin, that is also not allowed. That is, I say something which wasn't true. Like, for example, I say, God has said this in Quran, which was a lie. That will be, that will invalidate my fast. And also a compound kafara will apply on me. <coughs> then likewise, if I say something which wasn't said by the Imam, by the Prophet, by the Masumin, I and I ascribe that lie to the Imam, that is also going to have a compound kafara on me for saying something that wasn't true, ascribing something to the Imam, alayhi salam. In, whilst a person is fasting, you can go swimming, that's fine, but then be careful you don't ditch your head underwater, don't submerge your head completely. If someone submerges his head completely underwater, that will invalidate the fast and also a compound kafara will apply. If you want to swim and if you've submerged your head such that only half of your head is underwater, one ear, one ear is underwater, the other one is out, that will not invalidate the fast. So you can go swimming, you can ditch your head, but not both the ears underwater. If one ear is underwater and the other ear is out, the fast will be valid, no kafar will apply. Going to a place where there's thick smoke and dust, not allowed. And if that dust and smoke gets into your throat from where the letter kha is pronounced, that will also invalidate the fast. So be careful. Don't go to places. But Alhamdulillah, nowadays with these masks, even if there's dust and uh, smoke, it won't get into us. So that is something that getting those that dust and smoke into our system, into the throat from where the letter kha is pronounced. Using eye drops, ear drops, nasal drops, if it gets into your throat from where the kha is pronounced, that will invalidate the fast. So be careful if you have to use these drops, either use them before you, um, you start your fast or after your fast, or if it is something which can be used and doesn't get sent to your, does not get into your throat from where the letter kha, that is the top of the throat, then that's fine. 
this question that is asked a lot nowadays, uh, vaccinations, these COVID vaccines, are they permitted to take whilst the person is fasting? Yes, you can. Uh, vaccinations are allowed. Uh, any injections, any painkillers that can be injected, all of that is allowed. That what is <clears throat> you have to refrain from is IVs or anything that would be giving you energy, uh, like energy boosters and uh, in the IV form that has to be reframed. These are some of these <clears throat> rules that we have for the fast, which generally are <clears throat> have to be observed. Now, this is regarding the, <clears throat> the ahkam of the month. Now, someone who breaks, who cannot fast, like an old age or pregnant mother or, or, or fe mother feeding an infant, in all these cases where if she, if she fasts, it's going to be harmful to the baby or herself, or if she is pregnant, it's going to be harmful to her or the baby. In all these situations, she will not fast. Fasting is not wajib on her, then she just waves that fast by paying a fidya, which is 750 grams of wheat or raisins or rice, whatever. In, in dollars, it's going to be around $3, $2, whatever you can afford. Pay that per fast and then you don't fast during this month. And inshallah, later in your life, whenever you get an opportunity, the first opportunity, you'll have to make up these fast. For those who are old, for those who are ill, for those who are traveling, there is no fast. And <clears throat> uh, these were some of the rules that you have to abide by, observe them during the month of Ramadan. Now, someone, if he breaks his fast or tampers or does one of these uh, invalidators of fast intentionally, a compound kafara will apply on him. If he was in the state of Janabat and he did not perform ghusl before Fajr, so he will have to pay a compound kafara, which means he has to feed 60 people, which is $200, and then he will have to observe 60 fasts and a one qaza. So that much of a compound kafara will apply for doing anything, one of these, for invalidating the fast. Now, one of the akam it's good to know is that you have these tayammum tools ready. Tayammum is done on stone, on dust or sand. So it has to be dry, it has to be clean, or even if you have a cement wall without any paint on it, if you've got your kitchen counter, which is made of real stone, that would also do. If you've got a wall in your home, which is made of real stone without anything on it, any uh, paint or something on it, then you can still perform tayammum on it. Just wash it, it has to be tahir. And the way how you do tayammum, that is first of all, to enter into the fast, you have to be in the state of taharat. Means that if ghusl was wajib, he has to perform that ghusl and only then can he enter into the fast. And if the time was short or there wasn't any water or he couldn't perform ghusl and he woke up late and there isn't any time, he quickly performs tayammum, qurbatan ilallah, instead of that ghusl. The way he does is that he removes his rings, his glasses, and then you hit your two hands on that surface on which tayammum is allowed. It's either stone or dust or sand. It has to be dry and clean. People say on wood, on wood it is not allowed. If it is, yes, dusty, there's a lot of sand and dust that has settled on the wood, that's fine. Otherwise, on wood, you cannot perform tayammum. So you hit your two hands with the intention, qurbatan ilallah, I'm performing this tayammum instead of ghusl, qurbatan ilallah, and then <clears throat> from, from the edge of your palm and from where your hair grows, you bring your two hands up there, bring them all over down onto your forehead and towards the two sides of your forehead. That's the, uh, the face is done. And again, you hit, this is the mustahab to hit again for the second time, and with your left hand from your wrist here, you bring your hands all the way, your hand all the way until your fingertips. So when you're wiping this hand, be careful that you have touched the edge of this uh, hand, both sides like that. And with my right hand, I do the same from my wrist. I bring it all the way until the edge of my finger. So this tamum is done. And with this, I can start my fast and I'm safe. 
Now for the prayers, if there is time, if there is water, you need to perform ghusl and then you say your prayers. But now the fast, it is safe. So you can, uh, you can fast and there's no penalty that will be applied. So have these tools ready any, any moment if you, it is required, you can uh, have this done. And this was a little bit about the rules that we have for the fast. <clears throat> now, it is a beautiful month and the reward also that is for this month, it is huge. The Almighty says that he has a set amount for as ajr, for every action that you do. But for the fast and for these, uh, <clears throat> and, uh, for these uh, uh, observing uh, the month of Ramadan, he says the reward of that, I don't have any price list set for that. Says, Ana I will reward. Elsewhere says, I am the reward. So whatever you will do in this month of Ramadan, Allah will reward you or he himself is the reward. Why we say he is the reward, as he has said, when we do these a'mal and actions, we have the intention, qurbatan ilallah. Qurbatan ilallah means to seek the nearness of Allah. Now we, by this fast, want to get near to Allah. Now he there says that, ana jaza'uhu, I am the reward. That is, he has sought so close to me that he has sought me as the reward and ajr of that fast. So fast is beautiful. It's one of those actions that no one can show off as to whether he is fasting or not. Other, unless he just admits and keeps on saying that I'm fasting and I'm hungry and I haven't eaten and all that stuff. So if he doesn't do that, no one will find out whether he's fasting or not. All these invalidators of fast that were mentioned, he can do any one of them and no one would find out, but his God knows. He knows that what he is. So intentions over here matter a lot <clears throat> when it comes to <clears throat> fast. And the more the intention, the purer the intention, the more the ikhlas in this action, the higher the value and the price and the worth and the ajr of that amal is going to be. Ikhlas matters. And that what this fast teaches us is ikhlas. That is, you can be pure, you can um, attain this purity, in this beautiful month of Ramadan and you can get to whatever you want. It's a fast track that Allah has placed for our well-being, for our forgiveness, for our promotions, for our elevations to the higher ranks. One of the <clears throat> ulama that we have who, uh, who attained that marja'iyat uh, at a very, at a blink of an eye, you can say, uh, in a flash, is Marhum Shafti. Those of you who are from Iran, you, there's a masjid there in Isfahan. It's called Masjid -e Hujjat al Islam. Sayyid Shafti, uh, he built it. Says that he was very poor, hadn't eaten for a long time. It was hot, it was, there was a drought, and he was hungry for a few days. He got some money and he said, I'll go and get some abgusht. Uh, and go, uh, gets that uh, obgush is like Siri Paya. Uh, he has that. It says I bought a little bit. I didn't have the uh, the the vessel also, so I borrowed the vessel from that restaurant. He puts it in that and gives it to me. I was coming to my room, and then on my way I see that there is a pool of water and there is a dog who has given birth with all the puppies there and she is looking at me desperately and she hasn't eaten anything and she is, um, um, you can say, dehydrated and dying. He said to himself that I am a human being, I can do and I can survive. I have waited for all these days, I can wait for a few more days and to have a meal. So whatever he bought, he placed it before that dog and she eats it and she looks at him as if she wants to say something to him. He says that after she had had the meal, I took that vessel, I washed it, and I took it back to the restaurant to return, return it to him. Says I returned it to him and I was coming back to my room. Someone came and knocked and said, uh, he introduced himself, asked for me, and he gave me a big amount of money. Someone else popped in. He says that there was another person in, in, a, in a city nearby 
he had a wasiya, he was on his deathbed, a very wealthy man says one third of my belongings of my wealth be given to this Sayyid Shafti. Says that we are abiding by the wasiyat of that man, we have come to you to give you all that wealth. Says this person who was struggling for his own hand to mouth, for his own meal, was given so much that hundreds of people were fed by him from this point. He says, I calculated that when that person died, and this money came to me and the food that was given to that dog says it was exactly the same time that Allah accepted that from me and paid me back in such a beautiful way. That was as a result of that ikhlas. Ikhlas is that sincerity, that purity that was in him. No one knew he and his God. So that ikhlas can be worked and can be sought in this month of Ramadan easily and a lot more of that can be acquired. Now all of this again a lesson to myself. The reward that Allah gives also for each day of the fast that is immense. I'll just quote you what he gives for the first two days and then you can look into the riwaya yourself at how much of a bestowal he, he has for just being in this month of Ramadan. It's his month. He says that uh, though all of you are my guests. So he is the host, we are the guests, and he addresses us as the Yufur Rahman, that is the guests of the merciful God. On two occasions he does that, here in the month of Ramadan and in Mecca and Medina. Those who travel there for Umrah and Hajj are also the Yufur Rahman, guests of the merciful God and over here also it's the same. So if we benefit from this table that he has laid for us, we are the ones who will be uh, who will be <coughs> benefiting and if we don't benefit, don't eat from the table and with all these different excuses that we have, we don't come by the table, then we are the losers. So it's the night of the first. So from this moment, we have to make a plan that priority has to be given to this holy month of Ramadan or everything else has to be secondary. So whatever you can, whatever I can, from all my <clears throat> work that I do, a lot has to be given to this month. In that are these du'as that we have, in that is the recitation of Quran, in that are the azkar, are the tasbihat, are the du'as, are the prayers. You have to take a lot on board. And then this month when it ends, when it leaves, then it's going to be for another year. And we don't know as to whether or not we will be there for the next year or not. So whatever has to be done has to be done now. Saeed bin Jubair is the last uh, shaheed uh, who was killed by... Hajjaj bin Yusuf, la'natullah alayhi. Tens of thousands of mu'mineen he killed, and this is the last one, Saeed bin Jubayr. After that, this Hajjaj bin Yusuf did not survive for two weeks. He got mad and he died. Now this uh, shaheed, he says that I came to Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas is the first mufassir of Quran. Says to him that, can you tell me the reward that Allah has for fasting the month of Ramadan. He says, you've asked me something. I can't just answer you now. Take some time out, come and meet me with some extra time so that I can explain to you and tell you what the prophet has said to me. And when I say that to you, no ear has ever heard, no eye can ever see, no heart can ever perceive that what Allah the Ta'ala has hidden, has kept, for those who observe the fasts of the sacred month of Ramadan. And then he says, the next day I came to the masjid, I performed my Fajr prayers, and then I came to Ibn Abbas, he was there, and I said, you said to me, come, so that this is my first opportunity, and I'm free now, I want ready to listen to whatever you have. He says, he, came, he comes there, he sits there, and he says, when it is the night of the first of the sacred month of Ramadan, says on the night of the first of Ramadan, Allah forgives 
the sins of my nation, sins of the inhabitants of the mu'mineen, of the muslimin of my nation, says all of them, all of the sins he forgets. And then says those sins who that were done secretly, those sins that were done openly, all of that is forgiven. And Allah, he elevates him and gives him a rank, which is two million ranks higher. Now, in some of the riwayat, that says that the distance, the passage between one rank to the other, it's greater than the space that is between this earth and the sky. So two million ranks, where it's going to take us, Allahu A'lam. That is for the first night, forgiveness of sins. And then Allah elevates and ascends us by such a high rank. And then says, and on, the, and on the second day, Allah, ta'ala, for every step you take, in whatever you do, for every step of yours, fi dhalikal yawm, ibadatu sanatin, for every step of yours on that second day, whilst you are fasting, he writes a year's worship. Then he writes the sawab of a prophet, and then he writes for every step of yours the sawab of a year's fasting as well. So that much of an ajr and sawab he has for every day of the sacred month of Ramadan. Now this month it has a dua for each day. There are these small duas. You can get them online, recite them. Uh, the, the dua that we have for the day one, it is Allahumma ja'al siyami siyama sa'imin. Allah make this fast of mine the fast of those who fast. So fasting and fasting, there's so much of a difference between the two. Just abiding by those do's and don'ts, a person has ob observed the fast, but that is not that high class and high quality fast. High quality fast is those basics that were just mentioned among in the ahkam. They be observed, they be refrained, Plus, in addition to that, there are things that may not invalidate the fast, like backbiting, like accusing someone, like lying, or like doing something negative or bad. It may not invalidate the fast. But then that, that higher quality fast that we have, it definitely tampers that. So for us to perform a high quality fast, we say siyama sa'imin. That is, there have been people in this grand creation of Allah whose fasts were definitely different, not like the fast that we observe, the basic, the elementary level fast. They had the high quality fasts. So we are also aiming towards that high quality fast, which the best of the Salihin, the noble um, creation of Allah, ta'ala, they observed. For that, in addition to these uh, muharramat or invalidators of fast, Everything that is haram has to be put aside. Everything that is wajib and mustahab to be taken on board. And then there's a third level towards that elite and that high class fast. And that is nothing negative should come to my heart. So all these pop-ups windows that open up in our minds, in our, in our hearts every now and then, we have to quickly and constantly keep on closing, minimizing them so that they don't open up and they don't, we don't click on that and it just takes us anywhere. So we have to keep on minimizing those pop-ups, those khuturat that come to our heart for us to perform a high class and a high quality fast. Now, because it's the first day and if we admit and we take these st strong and severe steps, it's going to be easier in the remaining 29 days. If this first day is taken, easy then the other days also it will be uh, no one will care for that so first day have that mandate signed have these intentions made and also that uh, the high class fast will be observed and then says there are people who are unaware allah you keep me alert you keep me awake allah you always remind me and if I'm doing something wrong quickly, uh, make me understand that I've taken the wrong step. Wahabli jurmi fihi ya ilaha al And Allah forgive the wrong that I have done. 
in this month. Ya ila ya afian anil mujrimin. Oh, he who forgives the wrongdoers. So it is a beautiful month, and for this Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam, in that lengthy khutbah that he gave prior to the arrival of the sacred month of Ramadan, he says that a month is shadowing, sheltering upon you, and this month it is the best of months, a month which is which has a Laylatul Qadr, which is going, which has, uh, which is better than a thousand months. That is, you can get eighty-four years ahead in your plans in whatever you want to get to and a month wherein your nafas, your breathing it is tasbih a month if you are tired, you slept that sleeping will be worship a month, whatever you do it is accepted, whatever you ask for, it is granted and then he says that the best of things that you can do in this month is that this burden of wrong and sins that we are carrying says that shed them away get yourself forgiven, ease yourself, lighten yourself. And how can you do it? The prophet, he says that by two things. One, it is by fasting, which we already are, and then performing long and lengthy sajdas, by being in sajda in this month. So try to perform some extra sajdas. These extra sajdas have an, has a, a very beautiful effect in us being forgiven and in bonding and connecting to Allah Taala, And it is one of those statuses that Allah loves to see his servant in the state of sajda or when he is fasting. So we are already fasting, so we have to add a sajda to it. And these sajdas that are performed, Allah loves them, accepts them, and then grants whatever you want for that sajda. And then he and boasts towards the angels and says that were it not you who objected uh, when I want, cre wanted to create man and you said you want to create someone who is to cause corruption and bloodshed in the land, look at this human being, this is my creation. I haven't obligated him. He himself has bowed down into sajda and he, has, uh, he is in sajda before me. And now Allah says, whatever he asks me, I will give. So these sajdas have to be done. And then Rasulullah says, a month has come to you wherein the reward you get for reciting one ayah is one complete Quran. So if you recite one suratul ikhlas, you get the reward of five complete Qurans. And then if the intention and your ikhlas and your purity also is a high, high quality and high class, the reward also over there, that also intensifies. So here says, whatever you recite from Quran, every ayah equals one complete Quran. So make the best. And among the mustahabbat that we have for this month is to recite Surah Al-Qadr as much as you can. The prescription from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says that the Surah Al-Qadr 1000 times every day. Surah Al-Dukhan at least three times every day. That is a hundred times in the month. Prayers we have, du'as we have, recitals we have, sal salam, uh, the salawat ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad we have, which are a lot. Now one of the easy uh, munch size uh, amal that you can definitely do is there is a turakat prayer that you offer after your, a turakat prayer that you offer after your Isha prayers. That is Surah Al-Hamd you recite, and then you recite Surah Al-Ikhlas three times in the first rakat, and the same thing in the second rakat, Surah Al-Hamd and Surah Al-Ikhlas three times. And once you've done that, you end your prayers, and there is a small dua that you recite after your prayers. So that is one of the easy uh, amal that you can take on board, to, because tonight is the first. Do that. That is after your Isha prayers. Offer this two rakat prayer, Surah Al-Hamd, three Allah in each rakat. And after that, Subhana man huwa hafizun la yaqful. That is the dua. You can find it uh, online. Uh, I can send it to you. Do that. And that is one of the easy things. Dua iftitah is there. And being the night of the first of the sacred month of Ramadan, dua joshan kabir. And Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, he says that if someone recites this dua joshan kabir on the night of the first, he will be blessed to perceive Laylatul Qadr. 
And the aim and the goal that we have also is to perceive Laylatul Qadr. And which Laylatul Qadr, we don't know. That it itself is a suspense. Maybe the 19th, maybe the 21st, maybe the 23rd. But when we get to that and we are we're able to perceive that Laylatul Qadr, you have heaped and you've jumped ahead by 84 years. That is al Shahr that has been mentioned in that surah. Now here, the Prophet in this khutbah, he continues saying that you protect your tongues in this month. You, can, you protect your sights in this month. And you don't look at that what has been forbidden for you to look at. You protect, you guard yourself in this month. And then you have to, the other thing which the Prophet, he emphasizes in this month is For those who are orphans, have mercy on them. Upon your elders, respect them, honor them, be good to them. And towards your youngsters, be kind to them. All these beautiful quotes then Rasulullah has. And then he says, that when you want to break your fast, also break your fast with a, with a date and say Bismillah and recite Surah Al-Qadr and then Surah Al-Ikhlas. If you can top it up with an ayat al-kursi and there is a small dua, Allahumma laka sumtu wa ala rizqika abtartu wa alayka tawakkaltu. So you can say that and then you break your fast with a date and then have some warm water. That is also mustahab to have some warm water that will settle your stomach and that is mustahab and taught by Rasulullah. The adab that he has taught when consuming dates, he says that eat dates in odd numbers. Uh, don't eat dates in even numbers. So it's either one piece or three pieces, five pieces. In odd numbers you have, uh, you consume your date. That is again the mustahab that Rasulullah has taught us. Now, one of the ways how you can even top up and further enhance the ajr and sawab of this fast of yours is that before you eat, say, Ya Sahib al Zaman Adrikni. So that is an extra connection you will have with Imam al Asr, alayhi salam, that you've remembered him throughout the fast. And now that you break, you're breaking your fast, because Allah says the moment that a, a mu'min wants to break his fast, that is the happiest moment he has. He has observed a fast for the entire day. Now that he's breaking, he's happy. So in that joy of a, uh, of a mu'min that you are seeking and getting, you are taking imam as your partner, as your sharik, that he is also a partner in that joy of yours. Generally, what we do is that when we have problems, we have pains, we have worry, we have illnesses, we have all these distresses and stresses in our life, we call upon the ma'asumin to ease them. Generally, we don't have them on board when we are happy, which is bad and also sad. So here we have to learn to take them on board, come to them. If we were blessed with some joy, we come and share that with the imam, say, imam, thank you. And I want to share this joy with you. That is a healthy relationship that we can have with the Imam and with the Almighty Allah by performing those sajdas. So here this khutbah Sha'baniya of Rasulullah, it's amazing. He says that all these sins and the burden that you are carrying, shed it away by performing sajdas and by coming to the existence of Allah, the Baraka wa Ta'ala. Allah and says that uh, whosoever uh, offers a lot of prayers, he will, in, he will in, in, uh, ease uh, and remove the burden that is on him. One of the best of recitals for this month, it is Salawat ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. Recite that as much as you can. And then says that the doors of the heaven, they are open upon you. Ask that Allah, he doesn't shut them upon you. Says the doors of hell, they are closed and shut upon you. You ask Allah that he doesn't open them for, before you. And then he says that, uh, ask for whatever you want. Says shaitan is in chains and is, in, is uh, locked up in this month of Ramadan. So you ask Allah that he doesn't dominate shaitan upon you after this month of Ramadan. So all these special perks and blessings, favors are there from the almighty Allah for this beautiful month of Ramadan. 
we ask Allah to accept us all bi qabulin hasan and the best of rewards and ajr that the best of his um, servants asked for in this month we also ask for the same because on the day of Eid we say in Qunud as'aluka an tudkhilani fi kulli khayrin adkhalta fihi Muhammad wa Adam Muhammad that Allah enter me into every good that you made Muhammad and Adam Muhammad enter and every bad and every evil that you have kept them away from keep me also away from all that bad and all that evil so dua also has to be large has to be big that what you want from Allah Ta'ala. So dua that you will have on the day of Eid, have it from tonight, that all of that be given to you. And when you say that, that is what exactly you have asked him for. May Allah help us and those who have passed away, who are not with us, a share and ajr of all of these observances be sent to them inshallah. And Ya Allah, all those who are ill and ailing, grant them shifa. All those who have passed away, forgive them, elevate their ranks. Hasten in the return of our Imam, our Master, our Hujja. Count us all among the best of his servants and those who seek shahadat in his service. Wa subhana rabbika rabbin izzati amma yasifoon. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.